One of the news stories we're going to cover today refers to people protesting Corona-inspired lockdowns as Corona deniers. The propaganda right now is at a new level of fomenting divisiveness. And it is becoming apparent in the texture of the conversation on the streets. I got a text today from from, a, from an old friend who's been uh, kind of an alt-right activist for uh, for many years. And as long, I guess as long as there was a thing called the alt-right. And she sent me this picture that was her with, with, with a Trump sign and a uh, Antifa guy standing next to her. And it's funny, he's got a, a, a hole cut out in his, uh, in his sign. It says, donate to Donald Trump, give him the finger here. And he's you know, going like that through the hole in the sign. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and she said, you know, we used to be able to stand next to each other. And now we can't. The shit works. Divisive language, propaganda, social manipulation, conditioning, all the shit, it works. Look at the effect. And, and I don't just mean the immediate effect of the crap we're seeing now and the conversation, the, the, the lowered quality of the discourse, so to speak. But the point of all of this, never forget, that the main purpose of government could be summed up as to keep the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. Forbes just released the Forbes 400 list yesterday. And it said that they had an increase in overall wealth from the prior year of 8%, blowing away all past records since they've been tracking this. And it's not just, oh, the list got a little, you know, more people concentrated at the top. That would be the natural flow of things. We're only six months. I don't know. How, how do you want to count this? From Trump's state of emergency? We're, we're not even half a year into the corona crisis specifically in America. And already the rich are getting richer faster than ever before. This is a money and power grab. And it's disgusting. And we are being distracted from that and led to fight in the streets. I mean, it really breaks my heart. You know, some, some of the stories we got to cover today, because I, I do feel like I have to catch up the audience on where we are with lockdowns, shutdowns, enforcement, and the unique new threats that government represents right now. And in the United States, I've been saying really since the beginning uh, of the lockdowns that police are somewhere on the scale of five to 10 times more dangerous than they would be normally. Now, the overall effect is probably going down a lot because there's a lot less traffic. <laughs> there's a lot less Vehicle traffic, foot traffic, business altogether. There's a dark cloud over it. There's been a damper placed upon it. But when police know that they're not as accountable as they normally are, or that at least it's right now, a lot harder to hold police accountable, they're going to get away with some shit. And in some places, like, you know, in, in a way, Corona has become. You know, a giant IQ test or, or Rorschach test, right? An ink blot. You can see what you want in it and use it as an excuse to do whatever you want. You want to sit at home and collect welfare? Well, oh, we'll just blame the government, blame the shutdowns, collect your welfare. You want to go out and fight in the streets? You can go out and fight in the streets. You want to print $9 trillion? Print $9 trillion. You want to start arresting people for stupid shit? You want to be a busybody, Karen? You want to make work for government agents that shouldn't be done in the first place? Hey, 
Corona's got you covered. The dark clouds got you covered with all the excuses you could possibly want. So when I see this division in the streets, it really does break my heart because who is it that's fighting? Are there any billionaires out there getting pepper sprayed, throwing Molotov cocktails, beating people with sticks? No. No, it's just the poor, useful idiots in the streets. And, and I do mean poor in the literal sense. It's not rich people. It's poor people. You want an excuse to get poor people to fight? Don't worry, Corona's got you covered. Masks, distancing, lockdowns, polarization like never before, Black Lives Matter versus and you know and Antifa versus Proud Boys and the hardcore Trump supporters, however you want to characterize these <sighs> fringe groups. They're not fringe. Ah, I don't know. There's so much infiltration, so much manipulation. I wouldn't, I mean, you, this is being covered by the media a lot which should tell you something. If the stories of the fights in the streets serve the mainstream media narrative, then it also serves the government's narrative, which means it serves its corporate sponsor's narrative. And need I remind you, it's working. So you got to be suspicious of what's really behind this. How organic is it? How organic is a riot when pallets of bricks just show up where protests are going to be and a few agitators can sneak into the crowd, throw a few bricks, and a legitimate righteous expression of anger turns into wanton property destruction. And I'm not like universally against property destruction. I, I mean, even, even to send a message. Compared to what black Americans have been through, the property destruction we've seen in the last few months is not even a drop in the bucket. To complain about that, of all things, yeah, it's something to, to, worth complaining about. But if that's your focus, you're missing the point, you're missing the bigger picture, and you're missing why all of this fighting is happening right now. And just for my personal analysis about my participation, I would never go fight on, on one side or the other, but I'm, I'm tempted to, you know, go out and cover things and do man on the street interviews. And yeah, even then, like, I'm, I'm afraid. I mean, I'll go, I'll go to the strip in Vegas. I'll go to the third street promenade in, in Santa Monica or the pier, you know, when it's crowds of tourists, but even then, like, uh, am I wearing a mask or not to do interviews? I don't know. Are people willing to talk to someone? I want to talk to the mask wearers, right? I want to talk to the people who are really just this faceless horde going along with government edicts without question. When you think about, like, who, who are these people going out to fight in the street? And I think about the three who were shot in Kenosha by Kyle Rittenhouse, two dead, one survived. I got to hand it to him. If someone were coming at me with a gun, in his arm or in his hand shooting to kill me. I don't think I would have the presence of mind and the wherewithal, especially after getting smacked on the head with a skateboard to shoot for his arm, holding the gun instead of his chest. And I was hoping that that might be something that tamps down the violence. You know, everybody's for civil war until civil war shit happens. <clears throat> that maybe you couldn't hire people anymore to be agitators. And they go, I don't want to get shot. Shit. But that doesn't seem to be the case. It carries on. And you look at the uh, video of uh, the first attacker who was killed by Kyle Rittenhouse in Kenosha. Rabid, angry, confrontational in the streets. I don't think that helps. 
I don't think this serves freedom. We have to look up and we have to do better than this, America.